I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And if you're new here, my channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working professional photographer, not a YouTube photographer. And if you're not new here, my channel is still dedicated to all those things. And today I'm going to talk about street photography, something I've done a ton of, but I don't talk about that much. Well, that all changes today. In my 15 plus years living in Southeast Asia, I've shot over 100 assignments for the New York Times, travel assignments, business stories, news stories, just about everything you can imagine. And in just about every single one of those assignments, I've incorporated some sort of element of street photography. And today I'm going to show you some of those images and show you how I've incorporated street photography into my assignments and how it's made me a better visual storyteller. As always, no, not as always. I've got something brand new. So you're about to skip ahead. Don't skip ahead because this is brand new. I have added some new products on my online educational store. I've got a brand new editing package for people interested in help editing their personal projects. I've got a website on it for people that want help organizing their website because I've seen a bunch of people make horrible mistakes with their websites, both pros and amateurs. I also did a whole episode on improving your photography website. You can check that out. But the most exciting thing I have to announce today is the launch of my brand new exclusive mentorship program. This is now available for $14.99 per month and this is really, really intense one-on-one -on -one learning. It includes five sessions. It includes access to me via WhatsApp. It includes a whole bunch of things. This is for people that really want to dive in, really want an intense program customized for their needs and for their interest. And really this is for people that are willing to put in the work. This is the kind of mentorship program you will get out of it what you put in. More details on that. You can check all that out at justinmott.com. All right, enough about that. Let's dive into what we're here to talk about today and that is street photography. I've never been a typical street photographer in that sense of I just go wander the street and shoot whatever I want, but I've probably shot more street photography than most people out there, and I've probably got paid to shoot street photography more than most people out there. And that's because I've incorporated some sort of element of street photography into just about every single assignment that I've ever done. I started my career doing street photography. I fell in love with photography through street photography. I just hit the streets with my camera and explore, and that's where I fell in love with photography. So that's kind of what shaped my style of photography and why I probably incorporated into all the different types of photography I've done throughout my entire career. So with all that practice doing street photography in San Francisco, it only made sense when I hit the ground when I launched my career. I didn't really launch it. I started my career here in Vietnam uh, as an assignment photographer that I hit the streets with my camera and wander the streets with my camera. And that's what made me really fall in love with Vietnam. And it really helped me understand the different cities a lot better, just wandering the streets with my camera. And then as I started to get assignment work, as I started to get work, especially with the New York Times, it was only natural for me to incorporate street photography into my storytelling, into my assignment work. And they became really my bread and butter client. They became my meal ticket. That's probably where 90% of my work came from for like the first, at least the first five years of my career out here. But I started to get all sorts of different types of work from them. I started by working for the business section. That turned into working for the foreign desk. That turned into working for the travel desk. And I'd get assignments from the Paris office, from the Hong Kong office, and often from the New York office as well. So I was doing all sorts of different types of photography. And back then, slideshows were really, really big. So in addition to the layout, shooting for the print version of the magazine, yes, that's something that people used to do, read the actual paper. You also had to shoot for a slideshow as well. So that meant between like anywhere between 10 to like 20 images for your slideshow. And it was nice, so you had a lot of room. You had a lot of room to tell the story visually with your images. I started doing assignments in Hanoi. That spread out to doing different stories in Vietnam all throughout the country from north to south. That turned into doing stories throughout Southeast Asia, going to Indonesia, going to Thailand, Cambodia, even outside of Southeast Asia, even going to Australia as well. And so every single assignment I did, I. I, I would always fall back on my background in street photography. That's how I would fill in the gaps in my stories. That's how I would fill those slideshows. And they weren't just fillers, they were important elements to telling these stories that I was trying to tell. Uh, so I'll go through some of those assignments and show you some of those images. I remember one of my first big travel stories was in Myanmar. I mean, that was like the first sort of like edgy travel story. Now the content that I was shooting, the story itself wasn't that edgy. It was visiting all the traditional places like Inlay Lake and the Bagan temples and Yangon. But at the time, it, there was a lot going on in, in Myanmar and there still is, but at the time it was quite hard to go in as a journalist. So I remember having to go in under the guise of like being part of a group tour 
only I didn't go as a group tour. The, the group tour went one way and I hired a separate fixer to take me to all these other places. So myself and the fixer, we, we traveled throughout the country. I had a list, you know, often for these kind of stories, you have a basic outline of the story. Back then, the story wasn't even finished all the time. So sometimes you'd get a complete written finished story. Sometimes you'd get a rough draft. Um, so you had like your definite locations and some editors would give you like complete freedom and just say like, here's a story, you translate it how you want visually. And most, especially early on in your career, while they're still feeling you out a little bit and trusting you, most would give you a list. Like you gotta photograph X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, if you find other stuff along the way, again, I'd shoot the temples, I'd shoot the restaurants they asked me to shoot, the art galleries and things like that. But where I got some of my best shots, where I was allowed to be really creative, where I was allowed to tell a more complete story, a more in-depth story, was when I hit the streets. So, you know, I'd go to Bagan and I'd shoot the temples there, but then I'd walk around and see like the people selling stuff there, the vendors that are working there, the people with the horse carriages, transporting people around. Uh, the same in the city. I hit the restaurants they tell me to hit, the pagodas they tell me to go to, but then I just wander the streets like a tourist would. I wanted to show people what it would be like to just wander the streets of Yangon. What would that experience be like? And what better way to do that than through street photography? And another spot I would always go, and a great spot for street photography in general, for those of you new out there, is markets. Like I'd go to these markets and I'd just, I'd just wait. I'd sit on light and I'd wait for moments and I'd explore. And I wanted to show people like exactly what you would see if you wandered around. Like if you spent a little bit more time, not just looking at the tourist destination spots, of course I captured those, but what it would be like if you went around the corner? What would it be like if you saw those from far back? What would it be like if you waited for people to pass through or went down a different alleyway or went to a neighborhood nearby and just explored a little bit? So that's what I did and my editors really loved it and I was naturally good at it because again, that was my background. And I would do other things, even the temples, like yes, okay, you're gonna get monks outside the temples, but I would go into these little villages nearby the temples and say like, what would it be like if you just kind of wandered into one of these pagodas with his novice monks working and playing and doing things like that? and trying to capture those everyday moments. It's kind of like village street photography. So I'd go to these little villages, again, all relevant to the story, all important to the story, all parts to fill in and tell a more complete story, a more visually interesting story. And I'd just wait for moments, like capturing shots like this of the monks working, of the monks playing tag the earth. And that patience for waiting on light and waiting for moments to happen within that light really, really helped. And these are the shots I learned early on that, that my editors really loved, and they ended up giving me big spreads with these shots. And, and then it fed that confidence, and, and I would apply it to all my other stories. And in addition to travel stories, I mean, in Vietnam, I worked doing travel stories from north to south, covering all sorts of different things, mountainous areas, beach towns, cities, all that kind of stuff. 36 hour stories, for those of you who aren't familiar, the 36 hour series, that was a big, that was a big part of my job, is doing all these different 36 hours, which is just like, rapid fire travel photography. It's like basically what you do for 36 hours in a specific city. And I would try to capture as many of those locations as possible. But it wasn't just travel stories that lent themselves to street photography. I noticed I could do it for all my assignments. So my business stories, you know, broad stories about inflation or a booming economy or an emerging middle class, or just general economic stories. Sometimes those stories, the writer was still figuring out like, who their subject was gonna to be to tell the story through. And I was with them on the ground while they're figuring this out. Or sometimes that would change later on. They thought, okay, they got a good interview out of this person, but maybe later on that person was discredited or maybe they just changed the direction of the story. And so if I focus just on one person too much, I'd be kind of screwed if I didn't have the other shots. So in between getting the shots, of course, the portraits of the people they interviewed, the monuments, the landmarks and things like that, I'd hit the streets. I mean, what better way to bring people to these different cities, to bring them to the stories than to hit the streets and one of the streets. Just about everything you can capture on the streets can relate to these stories. Again, all these different business stories, inflation stories, everything on the streets can relate. I, even, I remember one specific story in Vietnam doing a story leading up to Tet, Lunar New Year, the biggest holiday in Vietnam. And you know, everything happened on the streets. I didn't have a specific shot list at all. It was very, very general. And my editor was very trusting and very free. And that was just like the perfect story that lent itself to street photography because the build up to Tet, everything is happening on the street. People buying their Tet branches, people out there shopping, going out with friends. And then during the middle of Tet, like the prime part of Tet is the streets are empty. So the streets really could tell the story in a perfect way, the build up before and the emptiness kind of during. So that was a great way. I remember I could focus so much on street photography. That was probably my first major assignment that was just like all street photography. And I had such a blast shooting it. And it wasn't just business stories and economic stories and travel stories. It was also news stories as well. I could apply my street photography skill. I remember being asked to cover a horrific stampede that happened in Phnom Penh, Cambodia and around 400 people died and I flew in the next day to cover that. And yes, a big part of it was to go to like right where the news was happening. So go to the hospital and be there and capture those moments when people were looking for their loved ones and, and 
you know, the hospitals just dealing with what had happened, all these dead bodies, it was, it was horrific. And I thought like, what's another way I can tell the story in addition to that? How can I add to this? Because, you know, in order to make people feel something about a story, in order for them to care and make them want to read the story more, I needed to bring people to these places. So I hit the streets, you know, I wandered around Phnom Penh and, and I tried to capture the aftermath, looking for people, like shots like this of someone reading the newspaper about what happened the day before. Seeing people gather at the location for a memorial and just, you know, capturing just people and the culture there of Cambodia, showing relatable moments, showing what it's like to be on the ground. Again, street photography kind of encompasses everything. So just being there and capturing that, in addition to capturing the new shots as well, these all played in, these all contributed to telling a more complete story and hopefully getting people to care, getting people to read the story, getting people to learn about what happened. Of course, the hopes in the end are having an impact with these kind of stories so things like this don't happen again. Street photography got me out of so many different tough situations visually. I remember doing a story about prisoners who were abused in Phnom Penh. So they were in prison for drug abuse, the guards abused them, and when they got out, they started to tell their stories. But they didn't want to show their full faces. So they let me do some portraits where I didn't show their full faces, and I showed them the picture for them to approve. And then in addition to that, I needed to really show the drug problem in Phnom Penh, show what's happening on the streets. So hitting the streets again, going to these neighborhoods where people were buying drugs, where people were using, to show that scene, to get people to care about the story, both locally and abroad. And so again, street photography. Even another time, I remember photographing these guys who were on trial for a bombing in Thailand, you know, during all the yellow shirt and red shirt protests and capturing all the turmoil going on in Thailand at the time. And I was there to, to photograph the trial, but I couldn't take pictures inside the trials. I had to get a picture of the prisoners being transported back and forth from the courthouse to the jail. And in addition to that, what else could I do? I mean, I'm just there covering this story, so I had to look around. I had to wander the streets. I wanted to capture that mood, that turmoil, that darkness that was happening in Thailand at that time. So I was looking for shots like this that could capture that mood, but couldn't capture that mood in the courtroom. Again, no cameras were allowed. So trying to capture that mood with shots like this, just wandering around the streets with my camera on me and just looking for moments to present themselves. Now, I'm not just going out and randomly shooting street photography like a lot of people might, where you're just sort of sitting on light. I'm looking for street photography that's relevant to all the stories I'm doing, shots that will contribute to the story as a whole. So yeah, obviously street photography was a big part of who I am. It's still a big part of who I am as a photographer, but it's not just for me. Street photography is great for anyone out there that wants to be a better visual storyteller. Whether you're a photojournalist like me doing heavier serious news stories or even lighter travel stories, but even people out there that are just interested in doing their own personal projects, their own conceptual photography, or just photographing a theme. It's a great way to sharpen your skills as a photographer and overall as a better visual storyteller, which I think most of us out there that are into photography are trying to get better at, but it's also fun. It is. I mean, at the end of the day, I love street photography. Whether I'm on assignment or doing it for myself, it's fun. It's a great way to explore. It's a great way to be creative. It's a great way to learn about yourself as a visual storyteller. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. A little bit different for me. I want to do more episodes like this, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. I go off. I'm very, very fragile. I go off on what you guys say. So if you like this kind of stuff, you like me diving into my past and relating it to my present, let me know in the comments section. I'll end with a couple of my favorite street photography shots that I've taken on assignment for the New York Times with a little bit of music because I've, I've been trying to show more pictures too. I mean, I am a photographer. So I should show more pictures. So some of you will ask, oh, were these all shot with a Leica? Actually, most of these, especially early on in my career, most of my street photography stuff, most of my assignment work was all shot with a Canon system. Uh, for those of you into gear, I was probably using, back then, about 90% of my work was probably with a Canon 5D, then a Canon 5D Mark II, and then a 35 millimeter Canon L series lens, and that's just about it. That's what I shot almost every one of my assignments with. So that's all for today, guys. Here's some pictures. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget that new mentorship program. Check that out. And some other great educational products on there. You can check all that out at justinmott.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to watch and see these pictures. Thank you, guys. Bye.